family threatened, her livelihood stolen. But this summer, she's ready for the mother of all battles. No! This is the movie! I'm an independent trader. I'm loving it. Tom, if you're not buying, fuck off. <laughs> Brendan and Jenny, uh, happy Browns Day. Are you trying to usurp Blue, uh, Blue's Day here, Brendan? What's the story? It, it looks like it, doesn't it? It certainly does. Uh, I have to say, it was the, it was the little museum, museum's idea that, you know, the, the, that Bloom's Day, which is a celebration of Dublin in many ways, um, would be a good time to celebrate Mrs. Brown, Moore Street, Brendan O'Carroll, you know, a Northside Dubliner, and that it would be the ideal day to open the, the exhibition. So uh, who's to argue? It's worked. Let's see which stall will be the next one to go. They won't be happy till the clothes is all down. But they won't take me without a fight. The movie comes out in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, can I ask you, Brandon, how much of it did you make up as you went along? All of it. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Uh, God, you know, somebody said to, to ask my son Danny once he plays Buster, um, does, does Brendan always stick to the script? And then he said, what script? <laughs> a script is a guideline. It should be a guideline. What we do varies from day to day and it oh, grows. Oh, we're very lucky in that in the when we were doing the movie, it's the same director as it is for the TV series. So because it's we've done three now at this stage, himself and Brendan, Ben Kellett and Brendan have a short hand between them and they come up with ideas on the fly and they say, listen, what if we try this? And what does Ben say? It'd be rude not to. It'd be rude not to. Be rude not to. So they just do things off the cuff. So. Jenny, for you, working with Brendan on the TV series, I mean, working with such Close proximity with your husband all the time. Was it any different on the on a movie set? The only difference really between working on the movie and working on the TV series is just we ended up having a bigger family because it's just more people. But it's still, it's the same, you know. I remember the first time we did the arenas when we were doing the live show and we all, you know, stood to do a sound check and looked out at the arena and went, oh my God, it's so big. And Brennan got us all to turn our backs and look in and say, this bit hasn't changed. The stage hasn't changed. So I think, you know, no matter whether it's the TV series or it's a movie or however big it gets. What we do doesn't change. Provided what we do doesn't change, we can make that leap from, you know, different between the different media. There's nothing to worry about. God's sake, sometimes you're as useless as a knitted condom. I met some of your fans outside and they have a, an almost One Direction-like obsession <laughs> with Mrs. Brown. <laughs> Just they, a are, they are very hardcore. How do you deal with that? Uh, and we're very lucky that the people who, uh, you were, as you were saying, are hardcore fans, um, they just like comedy. You, you'll find them at, at, at other comedians' gigs. They just like comedy. But I think you're right. Mrs. Brown has seems to have gathered a particular attraction of certain uh, types of fan <clears throat> that kind of see her as a mother figure. And um, so, if everybody wants to mother, um, you know, the likes of Justin Bieber, everybody wants to be mothered by Mrs. Brown. Okay. Yeah. What about um, the critics? The critics will be out in force again, especially because this is a movie. <sighs> is it still a matter of shag them? Are you just? Do you care about what people say? Well, the only people I care about, honestly, are the people who have to pay that nine quid at the door to get in. Yeah. They're the only people that that, that, that matter to me. We write, <coughs> I write for the audience. We perform for the audience. And the day I write something for a critic will be the day I'll cut my own throat. Um, critics have a job to do, and it's to work as critics in newspapers. If they could write what I write, as bad as it is, believe me, they'd do it. This is Brown. She has a mouth on her. Fresh fruit and vegetables! <laughs> you better take this serious. Mm, you'll sell your story, you stupid bitch! Anything else, love? Jenny, uh, it must be very good to see uh, Mrs. Brown developing as a character, and she was, she's a flawed character as well, isn't she? She is very flawed. I like to say she's a witch, but... Uh... <laughs> A lovable witch. A lovable witch, because we, we get a, to have a great kind of uh, friction as mother-daughter, so it's, uh, it's great fun, but she's, uh, she's a phenomenon. She really is. The very first time I did a scene where Agnes and, and Cathy have that zigzag um, against each other, when we came off the stage at the premiere of that, of that play, Jenny's mother came over and said to me, that scene was in my kitchen for years. Because <laughs> everybody, every mother and every daughter have that, that, that kind of lovable uh, tete a tete with each other, and, and it works. What, what about your own mother, Maureen, of course? Yes. I mean, what would she think? Oh, she'd be absolutely... This, she would love this. She'd love every bit of this. I often think, you know, I wish she was alive to see it now, but then I remember she'd be 107, so she probably wouldn't remember anyway. <laughs> um, six years ago, uh, on a book tour in America, I was asked to read at Rocky O'Sullivan's in New York, and that to her 
was the pinnacle yeah. of literary success. To be asked to read at Rockies is, you know, and I mean, uh, Salman Rushdie it, was there the night before me, so it was a big thing to be asked. I think if she was here, she'd probably be sitting between us. She would be sitting between us. <laughs> very very quickly, her. Brandon, uh, when are you going into politics? <laughs> Who says I'm not already there? Mrs. Brown's Boys, the movie. Now what? I don't know. You could disguise yourself as a man. No, I'd never get away with it. In cinemas June 27.